a time of worship uh, today. It's good to be here. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful weekend out there. Get outside in the sun a little bit. Uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Nicholas, and, and uh, helping me out uh, today with our worship host is uh, Mitch uh, Ullman. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Mike Mangan's our director of music. We have uh, Kit Ullman on the organ, and today uh, we get to um, have some wonderful music by our bell choir, and so we are uh, pleased to have our bell choir sharing with us today. And I would just mention that uh, you can fill out the attendance cards found in the pew racks and also uh, in the bulletin there's that you can count on me slip if there's anything on there that interests you. You can put both of those in the uh, offering plate as it passes by. And if you're a first time visitor, we have a gift for you out in the narthex on the table back there. So please take advantage of that. We welcome our uh, radio uh, broadcast um, uh, worshiping community and also those who are worshiping with us at Golden Living Center. Uh, we do have a few announcements we want to be able to share with you today. Uh, Wednesday, again, is our, continues our Lenten series, Amazing Grace, and uh, this week's topic is Amazing Grace for the Free, and that will be at noontime uh, that we'll have a, a service, and then following we'll have a soup and sandwich lunch, and there's a Bible study at 10.30 before that. And then also coming up on Tuesday evening, March 8th, is the uh, Encountering Grace study. And it uh, looks like it should be an interesting one. It's only four sessions long, so it's not going to take a lot of time out of your schedule. If you're interested in that, uh, sign up on the You Can Count on Me slip as well. On March 6th, uh, that would be next Sunday, we're going to be having a new member gathering for all those that might be interested in, in joining the church and, and hearing about that. So that would be following the second service, so it will be at 11.15. Uh, next Sunday. And uh, we need help for the uh, <coughs> Palm Sunday potluck on Sunday, March 20th. And you can also take a look on the You Can Count on Me slip for the areas that you might be able to help out with. And then we're also having a, uh, an outing here going to Wapan to see the McDowell Men's Male Chorus on April 9th. And uh, I guess the, the plan is to carpool from uh, Trinity Church here and uh, we'll all go up to the pizza ranch and have a dinner for those that want to do that and then go to the concert after. And then um, <clears throat> I would be interested in knowing if anyone is a history lover. You know, just someone that loves history and likes to uh, dig in a little bit and, and see some of that. This year our community is celebrating 175 years. Our church is the oldest one in the community, 170 years old this year. I know this summer we're going to be putting together something for the community parade and uh, we're looking for anyone that loves history. If we want to dig in a little bit, we want to pull out a little bit of our church history. We have a wonderful closet that's filled with all kinds of um, materials for us, pictures and information and books. And So if you're a person that loves history, please talk to us a little bit and let us know. I, I don't know uh, who loves history, so you've got to tell me that. I, I could talk to Mitch and he may say, I like science, but no, history wasn't my thing. And Mike may say, oh, I love history, but, you know, uh, something else wasn't mine. So, you know, is, if your interest is in that area, please let us know, because uh, we do have some exciting things planned for that. Let's join together in our intro. It's majesty, worship his majesty. Please stand. <laughs> Worship His Majesty unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, Kingdom, authority, O come His throne unto His own, His anthem reign. upon high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified. 
glorified King of all kings. Let us join together in our uh, uh, prayer, our opening prayer. In trust and confidence, we call on your name, Almighty God, eager to know you more fully and serve you more faithfully. We have heard your amazing promises given to our ancestors in the faith. We seek your word for us in our day, for we want to grow strong in our faith as our ancestors did in theirs. As they gave you glory and praise, we gather to do the same. As they pass on their faith to new generations, we seek to teach and live in such a way that our children and their children will be drawn to minister in your name. Amen. And let's please take a moment and greet one another, passing on the peace of Christ. Make it official. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Now that we're all seated, let's stand for our opening song. <laughs> praise him, praise him. Some of you can be over here if you want to. It doesn't, doesn't matter. How are you guys doing today? Great. Oh, let's try it again. How are you doing today? Great. Oh, I like that. I like that. You know something? If you want to understand and be filled with God's love, what do we have to do? What do you think our hearts have to be? Would they have to be closed or would they have to be opened wide open? Closed? If we close our hearts? No, it's wide open, isn't it? Wide open. Well... You know, I was thinking today, there's a couple things I wanted to do. I wanted to um, uh, try something here. I was a little bit hungry this morning, so I've got to get my cereal bowl out. You know, I don't know if you ate your cereal or not. Let's see, and then, you know, I open it up, and I've got to pour my cereal in my bowl. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this is the good stuff here. What do you mean? What? I don't know, it, it, it's not working. Let me try it again. Maybe I poured it too fast. Upside down? Upside down? I don't get it. What's the matter? 
I'm pouring it in there. Why isn't it going? Well, what do I have to do? Oh, oh, that way, that way. Oh, and then it'll stay in the bowl? Oh, wow, that's interesting. I can't fill it when it's upside down, can I? All right, now I'm a little bit thirsty. I'm a little thirsty. I don't know about you. Any of you like to drink water? No? And try this. It's not going in my glass. What's the matter here? Why isn't it going in my glass? Oh, oh, I got to turn it that way? Oh, there it goes. Now it's all filled up. Oh, thanks. That is so helpful. Ah, hey, don't spill that in there. <laughs> you know, I think, I think it works better when I have it right side up, right? If it's upside down, I put all that on my notes. Now I won't be able to read and see what I'm supposed to do later. That could be dangerous for the congregation. could be a long time here. You know, if you, you, can't, you can't be filled up, when everything's turned upside down. God was talking to the people a long time ago, uh, and they had some, they were letting their lives get turned upside down, and they were doing pretty bad things. And they weren't able to experience God's love and God's grace. God told them, you just have to get yourself straightened out a little bit. And God helps us with getting straightened out. We don't do it all by ourselves. But unless we get ourselves all straightened out, we're not going to be able to be filled with God's love completely. Now, even my table here. Is this straight? Do you know how you check? God said, I'm going to measure you with a, with a, a plumb line. And I'm going to hold the line. Is this, does this line go straight up and down? Let's see if our table's straight. What do you think? If I put this over here in the corner, it goes there. If I put it on this corner, where does it go? By yeah, by you. Is our table straight? Well, why, why isn't it straight? Oh, well, let, let get those books out of there. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. That's a little better. That's a lot better. Look at that. There we go. You know, I think as we read through the Bible, we realize if we want to get ourselves straightened out, and if we want to be filled, we have to open up our hearts. We have to listen to God's Word. God's love will help us to straighten out and live our lives in good ways. And if we open up our hearts, God's love will fill us so that we'll be filled with that love and able to share it with one another all the rest of our lives. Let's say a prayer. God, we give you thanks for teaching us that when our plates are upside down, when we, got our li when we have our lives turned around and not focused on you, you can't fill us up with your grace. So help us to open up our hearts to receive your grace and your love. Help us to live in ways that we are straightened out and that we're all leveled, that we're not going in strange directions, we're not going in the way that you don't want us to go, but we're following you. Help us to do that, O oh God, we'd ask in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, guys. Let's join together in verse 3. Our blessed Redeemer, every portal, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Amen. Amen. We come to the time in our service where we um, uh, share with one another some joys and blessings and some concerns that we'd like to have remembered and lifted up uh, through the coming week. Uh, 
The altar flowers on, on the altar behind us here are given by Kim Llewellyn family in memory of Kim's sister Colleen Tenpass. And we also have flowers given by Barb uh, Berkovich's family in honor of uh, her birthday uh, this week. And today the radio broadcast mm -hmm. is given by the children of Audrey and Gordon Burton in honor of Audrey's birthday. And then last week we had uh, on Sunday morning what people will do to get out of church. Uh, the Burkholders decided to have, have a baby on Sunday morning, just pretty early there, and so they skipped out last week. But they're here today. I can't believe that. A week, a week later, and there's Tom and Kim and, and their baby, uh, Owen Nicholas. And so uh, we're thankful to have you here. <laughs> Things went well for her, by the way, so that's, so that's good. Every, everyone's healthy, and so we're thankful uh, for another birth in our church. And then today we lift up the family of Carol Linke. Uh, Carol passed away uh, this past week, and a service celebrating her life will be held on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2 p.m. at Kepsel Funeral Home here in Beaver Dam. We have a couple of other prayers. Um, uh, Rob and Bihan have a friend, Joel, that they wanted to have lifted up in prayers, and so we'll lift up Joel for prayers. Uh, Paul King had a, a fall the other day and um, ended up, he, he broke a, a bone in his hip, they did surgery yesterday. He's done doing very well. Actually, they said he's, they're going to have him up and walking today. Sometimes it's just amazing. You can have surgery one day and you're up walking the next. But let's keep him in prayers as he goes through some time of recovery and strengthening himself again. That's amazing. Well, let's spend some time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, the hint of warmer spring weather that's been about us this past day or two. And uh, we just ask that that would continue, Lord, but we know we're still a little bit early in the, in the season for that. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the beautiful flowers on the altar uh, given in memory of Colleen Tenpass and uh, the birthday of uh, Barb Berkovich. And also we thank you for the radio broadcast given in honor of Audrey's birthday. And uh, Lord, we just ask your blessing on little Owen Nicholas, uh, newborn, has come into the world, blessed his family, and we just pray that you would bless him with uh, strength and growth and good health and to be a joy and a blessing to his parents and siblings. And Lord, we also lift up the family of Carol Linke and as they are mourning her passing and just ask that you give them strength and comfort in this time and uh, be with them as they uh, celebrate her life and say goodbye uh, during the funeral coming up this Wednesday. And we also lift up Paul King who took a spill uh, this past week and had surgery and we're just so thankful that all went well and, and it's just amazing that he can be up and walking on that, that leg already and that hip. We just pray for a complete and speedy recovery and uh, ask that you be with uh, the caregivers and the doctors as he continues to uh, move along the path of healing and wellness. We just ask your blessing on this service today and give you thanks for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and now we have some special music by our handbell choir his eye is on the sparrow
It was wonderful. We'll have another uh, special piece from them in a few moments here uh, also. As we're preparing ourselves for our offering, sometimes we like to just get back with you a little bit and uh, just let you know of a couple things that have happened. We had, uh, before Christmas, we were taking up some offerings to send some Bibles over to Liberia to uh, uh, some people who'd never had the Bible translated in their language, and it's the, the Pella language, and so we sent the Pella Bibles over there, and, and here's a picture there, and uh, from, from there we had a hundred of them that we sent over to Liberia, thanks to your uh, offerings, and then they were given uh, then out to, um, uh, go ahead with the, the next one, yeah, given out to uh, five of the district superintendents, uh, received those Bibles uh, from, from the executive secretary there, and and this was, uh, go ahead, the next one, the next one's at their annual conference. And then they will take those Bibles back to their, their districts and their area in the country there where persons will, for the first time, not just hear God's Word, but be able to read it for themselves. And so thank you again. And we just wanted to get back with you on that uh, wonderful uh, offering uh, throughout December. <laughs>
Gracious God, for all the blessings that you have given to us, we want to return a portion of those to you. We offer you these gifts and ask that you will bless them and use them to share your love and your grace throughout our world. We offer you so much more, God. We offer you our gifts. We offer you ourselves, our hearts, our lives. Use us, O oh God. Use us for your purposes. Help us to walk in the straight paths. Help us to keep our hearts always open to the leading of your spirit. With these gifts, we ask your blessings. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for that beautiful music. Much appreciated. Well, this morning we have just a couple scriptures to read, so sit back, relax, close your eyes if you want. Uh, our first scripture reading comes from 2 Kings 21, uh, 11 through 16, and 2 Chronicles 33, 10 through 13. 
Manasseh led them astray so that they did more evil than the nations of the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord said through his servants, the prophets, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I am going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of everyone who hears of it will tingle. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measuring line used against Samaria and the plumb line used against the house of Ahab. I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes out a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and give them into the hands of the enemies. They will be looted and plundered by all their enemies. They have done evil in my eyes and have aroused my anger from the day their ancestors came out of Egypt until this day. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought out against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. In his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed to God, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So the Lord brought him back to Jerusalem, to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. And from Jeremiah 21, verses 8 through 10. Furthermore, tell the people, this is what the Lord says. See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine, or plague. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. They will escape with their lives. I have determined to do this city harm and not good, declares the Lord. It will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will destroy it with fire. And from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus, to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Let's join together with our hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. It's number 452 if you're using your hymnals. And you can remain seated. bow for a moment of prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts 
be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We get into that part of the story where we're going through king after king and prophet after prophet, and, and today I don't want you to be worried about remembering all the names, but the story, the story that goes along with them is important. And if you're a good history buff and you like following the names and, and the places where everyone is and, and all that's happening, that's wonderful. Sometimes people that don't like the history as much get a little bit lost and say, oh, you know, tune it out a little bit. But don't tune it out. You just don't have to worry about all the names if you're not a history buff, but do catch on to that story. Because from the very beginning, God has tried to place us as, as God's creation that God called very good. Remember that? Of all the things that God created when God created uh, humans, God said this is very good. Not just good. The rest of creation is good, but we're very good. And God placed them in this special garden, and even there, when everything was wonderful, we had to have our own ways and ended up not in that wonderful garden again. And so God still wants us back. And so the story as we've been going through is how God's trying to get us back into God's graces so we can experience all the wonderful things that God has in store for us. There was a, a start over time. Things got, went really bad, and, and then we have the stories of Noah, and, and, uh, and God kind of did a start over again. Well, started again, Noah was good. Well, then they had their struggles and things went bad again. Well, we're back at one of those times again where things just went sour. We'd had, last week we talked about Hezekiah who was this, this wonderful king and he followed God and he cleared out all the idols out of the temple and, and made sure that uh, everyone was following in God's ways. After Hezekiah died, his son, Manasseh, he came in and he was the king. This was the beginning of some of the major fall for the last um, part of the people of Israel. They had divided into two kingdoms. You had the north kingdom and the south kingdom. Last week we talked about how the northern kingdom fell. Today is the southern kingdom that fell. Manasseh was not one of those good kings. And he disobeyed in such ways that there was going to be no remedy. The kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom, was going to fall. As you read about that and you hear about Manasseh, he said it was, he was evil. He was more evil than any of the predecessors, and he was more evil than the pagans who ruled the country that, that he was the king over. Manasseh didn't seem to listen too much. I, I like it when they described it. The Bible is sometimes just so graphically uh, good on there. He did so bad that if you hear of all the bad things that he did, even your ears will tingle. Isn't that a great illustration? It's so bad your ears are just going to be tingling. And as you read through the story, you can understand why. He sacrificed his own son on the altar of the pagan idols. It's said later on that he uh, killed the prophet Isaiah by stretching him out as an old man and sawing him in two. Not very good things if you take a look at uh, what types of things he did. Talked about the plumb line. He's measured this way. Talked about um, being turning the dishes upside down. You can't fill yourself up with any of God's love if you're turned upside down to God's ways. Hmm. I love that he was captured, though, and eventually he was led away by this hook that was put into his nose. What's interesting, though, is, is as bad as Manasseh was, and those are some pretty awful things, once he was taken away, he repented, and he begged for God's mercy. After all those terrible things. Sometimes you may think you've done something bad and, and you don't know that God will forgive you, that, that God won't have any mercy on you because what you've done is so awful. How could God ever forgive it? God forgave Manasseh. And Manasseh humbled himself before God and he was restored back uh, to this uh, kingdom again. One of the rare times that a king went bad, repented, and came back and got his place back again. Well, he passed away, and his son wasn't quite so good. He had a son that was, uh, that was bad and evil again, and, and he did not humble himself before God. And eventually that son was assassinated, and, and uh, after he died, then his son became the next king. And that was Josiah. He was eight years old. How about an eight-year-old king? And he was the last. He was the last of, of Judah's good kings. 
And as uh, Josiah was there, he was the one that um, was looking and found, found the book of the law of Moses. And so one more time, tried to get the nation, the people of Israel to turn around and follow God's ways. He was a good king. The people, however, they did not repent. And so there was no remedy. There's no turning back. God had made the decision. Again, Jerusalem would be destroyed and the people would all be put into exile. Now there were two prophets that came along during that time. And there was Ezekiel and there was Jeremiah. Ezekiel was one that when the Babylonians came in and, and took the people of Israel off or the people of Judah off into exile, they grabbed a hold of Ezekiel and they took him along the way. So Ezekiel was off into exile and his task was to talk to the people in exile <clears throat> and remind them that because of their evil ways <clears throat> that, um, that Jerusalem would fall and they would suffer the consequences. And so Ezekiel was off away in exile Jeremiah was a prophet, and he was not deported. He stayed in Jerusalem. So those who were still in Jerusalem, Jeremiah was prophesying their fall. Either way, neither prophet was very popular. They didn't like either one of them. They didn't say good news. They just had Hezekiah. They could remember where Hezekiah was told by the Assyrians that they were going to take him over, but Hezekiah bowed before God and said, God, please spare my people. And he was a good king and led the people to pray to God. And the Lord came in with the angel and, and wiped out the Assyrian army so that they did not overtake the land. Well, here we have another king, and they can pray the same things, but this time it's the Lord that says, no, the Babylonians are going to come in. They will take you. If you stay in the city, uh, a third of you are going to stay in here and, and, and you're going to die by some type of illness. A third of you will die by the sword. And the other third, you're going to be taken out of here and you're going to be scattered throughout the world. But Jerusalem will be destroyed and the nation will go into ruins because of the way that you lived your lives. Ezekiel has this um, uh, message for those who've already been taken out. And you read through Ezekiel and you see big wheels in there and you see these bizarre creatures and you, hear, you see this strange throne that's there. But it's a simple message. And he was given the message that, Ezekiel, you're going to have a difficult ministry. But I want you to be brave and take courage and confront the wickedness anyway. Jerusalem no longer welcomes the prophets. Jerusalem now kills the prophets. And Jeremiah, when he was asked by God to go ahead and prophesy, he said, oh, I'm too young. And God said, well, Jeremiah, before you were even born, when you were in the womb, I called you for this task. And then the Lord touched his mouth and said, Jeremiah, I put my words into your mouth and I want you to share this with the people. You know, you'll be mocked, you'll be despised, you'll be scoffed. Your city will be under siege. But I will put my words into your mouth and I want you to share those words. It may not seem like you're successful. It may seem as though everybody ignores you. But if I, the Lord, give you the words, I want you to share them with my people. Hmm. Why does all this happen? You read back and forth. God had all these wonderful things in store for us. Why did the deportation happen? Why were they off into exile? God still had a purpose in all this. And God somehow still wanted the people back. And it seems strange that the people were left and exiled and their cities were crushed when God wanted them back. But as the story continues, once, once Israel, Jerusalem fell, the prophet's message turned around. So it was no longer death and destruction anymore. But they said in spite of everything, there's still hope. As Jerusalem was falling... Jeremiah went out and bought a piece of land. It was to give people hope. You don't buy land when you're about to have your community and your nation crushed and taken over. You buy land for what? That's worthless. All your money that you spend on it's going to be gone. They're going to take it over. But Jeremiah bought the land. And the land was more than just a piece of land. It was the symbol that said, you will be restored. You're being punished because of what you did. 
There's no doubt about that. He said, for 70 years you'll be in exile, but you will come back. Those that were there during that 70 years, you know, you have to wonder, did they ever feel like they're ever going to come back? And you know they probably didn't. But God's promise was there. After the 70 years, you will return. And he wanted to give them the hope. Ezekiel was telling a different story. He told the story, he said, look around and, and out in this field and it was filled with dry bones. And so there's the, the son of, or this man of God that's out there in this field and there's all these dry bones. And, and the Lord speaks to him and says, what do you think, son of man? Can these bones live? And of course he says, well, Lord, only you know. And he said, prophesy to the bones. He's speaking of Israel. They're so far away from from God, this faith in God, that they're like a field filled with dry bones. There is no hope for dry, bleached bones. And yet he prophesied to the bones. And it said the muscles came and the tendons came and the skin came and the bones came together. And they came together and, and it formed a human. No longer bleached bl bones, but there's a body laying there. Still no breath in it. And then God said, prophesy to the breath prophesy to the breath. It's one thing to get things back together again and, and feel like maybe your body's uh, back together and whole again. It's another thing to breathe life into you. And again, that can only be done by the Spirit of God. And the life was breathed into those bodies again so that they would live. Ezekiel said that's what it's going to be like for us. We will be like bleached bones, but God will call us back and breathe life into us. Jeremiah says, even though you're losing everything, I'm buying this land to remind you that you're going to come back, that God has a blessing in store for you. It's a promise that God had made to Abraham. It's a promise God had made to David, that God will bring us back, not just for our sake, but for the sake of God's holy name. It's not because we've been good. It's not because we're perfect, but it's so that God's love can be shown. Because God created and called the people through Abraham to be a blessing for everyone. That we will experience blessings and we are to be that blessing for others. Through these prophets we see and experience hope. Even when it feels like the story is over. And God doesn't ask us necessarily to be successful as we might find, define success. And we may want to go out and prophesy and say, everybody repented and, and uh, were fasting and they were praying and, and that would be successful. But God didn't worry about our success. God wanted the prophets to be faithful. And sometimes that's true for us too. Maybe we sense a call through particular ways of, uh, of uh, sharing God's grace. Maybe it's not successful. But maybe God's not worried if we're successful. But are we faithful? It's that faithful group of people that God holds on to to pass the story from generation to generation. Sometimes we wonder, you know, what's the assignment that God has for us? If you had a chance to read through our, our uh, website and, and you take a look at the note that's written in there, there's uh, something in there, quick message each week. And I love this week's, and it was talking about uh, a teacher in Texas and gives her, her students some kind of a a test and ask them to name the four seasons. And I love that. And they said, well, the four seasons, there's dove season, deer season, duck season, and turkey season. Isn't that great? We might have to switch a little bit in here. I think we'd lose the dove in Wisconsin. We'd put in fishing season. There's still fishing, deer, duck, and, and turkey. The four seasons that we have, some of you are nodding and say, well, yeah, was there any other seasons? I mean, really? <laughs> I don't know what season, and as it goes in this, this article, it says, I don't know what season you're in, but I do know this, that God has something for you. God has something for us, no matter what season. You know, we might be standing in the rubble, and it seems like everything's falling apart. And maybe no one's going to listen. But if we're in that season and God's calling us, we're to be faithful to God's call. God had something for Jeremiah to do. God had something for Ezekiel to do. And it really didn't positively affect the people that they talked to. Seventy years later, their messages were remembered and never again forgotten. God wants us to be faithful to do the things that God calls us to do, not concerned about our abilities, too young, too old, too this, too that. 
It doesn't have to do with how skilled we are, but it's our heart condition. Are we available for God's call in our lives? That's what God's concerned about. It's not about us. It's about God and about God, what God is laying on our hearts, what God is calling us to do. No matter what season we're in, God's calling us to make a difference, to make a difference now and even today. Our question is, are we available for God's purpose? The call is, qu is clear. What are we called to do? Amen. Let's join together in our closing song, My Hope is Built. Please stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His hope is covenant, his blood support me in the running flood. When all around my soul gives way, he that is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.